What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be showing a quick 3D scene and compositing walkthrough of our recently uploaded Punch Impact Sweat Droplet simulation that we have used to enhance this live action shot. As usual, this scene walkthrough is not really a tutorial, but hopefully will provide some insight on how you can create some similar effects on your own. Of course, on our channel, we'll also be releasing a full tutorial as well, so stay tuned for that. Before we get started, I would like to mention that we are participating in the Blender Market February sale. All of our add-ons including Horde, SpiderFi, Chaos, City Builder 3D, Texture Stamps, Weather Effects, and more will be 25% off this week on Blender Market. So if you're interested in those, feel free to check those out in the description below. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we did for this shot was of course 3D track our scene. So in the motion tracking tab, I've just tracked a very simple camera move here using a few different points. And I've actually used a tripod track for the solve on this camera. And I have a pretty good solve error of 1.85 pixels. Um, not a lot of data to track for the shot, but fortunately it was enough for the scene. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that I've just tracked a few points here on the rope beside our boxer when he gets punched. And this was fortunately enough for a very basic tripod track. Now after tracking the actual camera in our scene and making sure our solve error was below two, I've also gone ahead and tracked the head movement of our character in the shot here. So you can see I've added a object track here called head and when I play through this, you'll see that I've just tracked some markers on our character's face here. Now, this is not the best object track. You can see that once he turns his face fully away, we actually lose our tracks entirely. And you can see that the solve error is eight pixels as well. But I really just wanted to have this as a reference to place the 3D head geometry in our scene. So this was just enough to make sure that I was placing that 3D model in the right position within the actual 3D world. So that was our second step here. Now that I have the tracked camera and object data, I brought the very basic 3D head model Model into our scene and the first step to creating the sweat drop simulation was to actually align this geometry to our live action character's face as best we could so what I've done here is under the object constraint properties tab I've used an object solver so that this 3d head geometry would follow the head object track initially and then as you can see here I've just also manually animated some keyframes as well so I've started off with the object tracking data and imported that onto our 3d head model and then I just filled in any gaps by just hand animating the head further. So pretty simple little track here, not perfect. However, for the sake of the simulation process, since we aren't actually going to be rendering this geometry in the scene, it worked out just fine. So pretty basic setup here. After creating this very basic match move for our character's head, the next thing I did was create a soft body simulation for this mesh. And the whole purpose of creating the soft body simulation on the head is so that we can actually use that soft body simulation to simulate droplets coming off of it. So again, we're not actually rendering the soft body simulation for our head, we're just using that mesh as the flow object for droplets in our scene. So as you can see here in the physics properties tab, I've just added a soft body modifier. And if I go ahead and enable it, you'll notice that we actually have our punching effect. And the reason we're getting this collision on his face is because I've actually added a very basic sphere to the scene. And I've made this sphere a collision object in our physics property settings as well. And I've just animated the sphere hitting our character's face here right when the live action character in the scene hits our real person. So I'm just trying to kind of match move his fist as it hits our 3D character's face. So pretty simple little colliding object here. And essentially I've just adjusted the soft body physics settings on our character's head here. I've brought the gravity for our soft body simulation all the way down. So there wasn't a lot of vertical movement on it. And I've also brought down the speed of our soft body simulation to 0.5. And the reason for that is because our live action footage is actually shot in slow motion. So you can see here, it's actually a slow motion shot. So we want to try to match the physics simulation to the slow motion as well. And in retrospect, I should have actually made this speed parameter actually be much lower because the actual live action footage is going much slower than half speed. So probably I should have brought the speed parameter down to 0.25, so around one fourth the speed. And that would have helped make the soft body simulation a bit better. But anyways, after creating the soft body simulation and baking it out in our cache tab here, I then wanted to create a fluid simulation with the soft body as the flow object so that spray fluid particles would be emitted from our soft body as it moves around. So as you can see here, I've just made our 3D head geometry a flow object with a fluid modifier. I've changed the flow behavior to inflow. And then as you can see here, I've actually keyframed the use flow setting so that at frame 22 here, our particles would stop being emitted. So as you can see here, when I go to frame 22, our use flow option is unchecked. And at that point, this face geometry will no longer emit fluid. If you guys aren't familiar with fluid 
simulation, pretty much in order to set one up, you need two basic elements. You need a fluid domain, which is a cube surrounding where your simulation is going to be. And that's where you can adjust your fluid settings. And then you want a flow object, which will actually emit the fluid. And there are a variety of other settings you can change, but that's the general concept. So we're using this head mesh as our flow object. So it's emitting fluid. And then I've also just created a fluid domain here, which uh, as you can see here is just this box surrounding our face here. And all of our fluid simulation is going to be contained within this box. But anyways, once you create your flow object, you then create your fluid domain where your simulation is going to be. You can then adjust your resolution divisions, which controls how much detail is going to be in that simulation. And then of course you bake out your simulation data. So in Mantaflow, there are several different steps you need to take to bake out different parts of your simulation. The first step is to bake out the actual liquid simulation. So as you can see here, I've baked out this liquid simulation at 160 resolution divisions and a time scale of 0.5. And then after baking out the liquid, then you can scroll down here and bake out your particles as well as a fluid mesh. Now, in this specific case, I didn't actually use a fluid mesh because I really only wanted the spray particles. So all I needed to do was bake out a basic liquid simulation, experimenting with different resolution divisions. And then after baking that liquid simulation, I've baked out some spray particles on top of that simulation. You can see that I've just baked out some particles here as well and then once you bake out those spray particles you can see if I just enable them here we can actually see these spray particles being emitted as if our 3D head geometry were emitting water in our scene. So a lot of the time when it comes to 3D simulation, it's about creating data to drive other simulations in your scene. And that's exactly what we've done here. We've created the soft body simulation of our head, and then we've turned that into a flow object to emit these spray particles. And then based on the wobbling movement of our face here, it's actually going to emit our droplets in a more realistic way than if we, of course, you know, hand animated it or, you know, tried to use some force fields or something like this. So this is just one way you can use soft bodies to actually get a more realistic and procedural looking fluid simulation. So after baking our fluid particles, I've just created a very basic droplet instance here, which is just a simple icosphere, as you can see here. And I've just added a very basic material here, mixing between a glossy and a transparent BSDF shader. Pretty basic little droplet with just an icosphere here. And I've just instanced this droplet as the spray particle over our fluid simulation. So all these little individual droplets are just that particle instanced over and over again at various sizes and randomness for a little bit more realistic result. Anyways, after creating the simulation, I did a very basic render of the particles in our scene. As you can see, if I go into render mode here, it's a pretty basic render here. I'm using the head as a holdout so that any particles within the head geometry here wouldn't be rendered on the specific view layer. And then I exported our animation of the droplet pass onto an image sequence so that I could composite it better into our scene instead of the compositing software. Now, usually I do my compositing in Blender or Fusion, but for the sake of playing back in real time, I've actually done it in After Effects this time. So I'll just do a quick layer breakdown of the different elements that I've used here. So as you can see here, our first layer is our live action shot. Then I've overlaid this simulation on top of it and called this one droplets left because I've actually masked out different portions of our simulation here to kind of retime different portions of the simulation itself. So I've added this portion of droplets to the left of our character's face here as it gets hit. Then I've added a few different effects to these droplets. So as you can see here, if I just disable them, you can see without any of our effects added, it looks a little bit uncanny here. So so then I've added a little bit of curves to brighten up our simulation a bit. Then I've added some directional blur to match it to our scene a bit better. Then I've added some lumetry color to warm up our sweat droplets a bit. Then finally, I've added some radial blur that's kind of fading off as we get away from this point here. I feel like the radial blur really helped sell, especially the edges here, where it's a little bit obvious that they're just 3D particles. So don't underestimate the power of compositing in certain cases like this. A lot of the time, the compositing is what brings it to the next level. So pretty simple, basic color correction and some motion blur. And pretty much the other layers on this composite are just masking layers. So I've masked out our foreground hand here, right here. And I've overlaid some more roto elements here. And finally, I've retimed some droplets coming off the right side of his face from our simulation. So I've taken that same export of our droplet particles and I've just retimed it so that they would be emitted right when that impact started. And on those droplets, I've done pretty much the same effects as on the left side here. So you can see if I take these off really quick, here are the droplets without any effects added. Then I've brightened them up a bit, add a little bit of camera lens blur, directional blur, lumetry color to add a little bit of warmth since our footage is warm and then finally some radial blur to uh, give it that final touch. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I added a little adjustment layer with some color correction and added a little letterbox at the end there. But you can see that other than those droplet layers, we've uh, just done some very basic roto work on the actual live action footage and overlaid that on our footage as well to help blend it into the scene a bit better. Sort of feathering different things as well, just uh, fading different things in and out. And yeah, that was our final composite. For the first time creating an effect like this inside a blender, I was pretty happy with the result. I do think that the timing was the biggest issue with this one. If I brought the simulation down to about a quarter of the speed rather than just half speed, I do think it would have matched our slow motion footage a bit better. So next time I do a simulation like this, I'm gonna try to dial those settings in a bit more, but still pretty happy with this result. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel. And I'll see you next time.